What is up, everybody? How are you guys doing? Welcome to the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast. We do this every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. With me, as always, is Joe and Mike. And today we've got the Larry and Nick from SVS. What is up? How's everybody doing? Oh, yeah, man. What's Good up? to have you guys. We are awesome. Good. Happy to be nice here. To see you guys. Long time coming, I feel like. Yes, for yeah, sure. Man, it's been a long time we've been able to hang out in person, so we got to do it virtually. Yeah. Somebody had a question about where is how did you get the Larry? How's that? How's that? A yeah, thing? I don't even know. Does anybody know? Uh, so I did an interview, what I guess two years ago, with uh, one of our retailers, and it was up there, and somebody in the comments referred to me as the Larry and just kept going and uh <laughs> it just kind of stuck so yeah. now i'm a hashtag and nick likes to play it up it's a little weird for me um <laughs> uh, but there's actually a restaurant in phoenix called the larry so i was hoping uh, you mentioned the restaurant if you're in uh, phoenix yeah, well, so, check out the larry great yeah so go, go check there. them out but i i had plans to go and that was my next trip before everything hit so i had to cancel it Nice. Um, but uh, I will be going just so that we can do a hashtag of the hashtag inside the hashtag. So we'll have the some follow up is what's on your shirt because we always have to know. Oh, so uh, 80s junkie. So this oh, is yeah. kind of my homage to say anything, but in reverse. So instead of Cusack holding the boom box, the boom box is holding him. Oh, look at that. Uh, yeah. You'd always have something. Oldie but a goodie. He's, he's running out, yeah. though. He was complaining. No, to I've got a whole. I went through, man. I've oh, I've been did. doing inventory <laughs> my shirts. So it's funny as we've gone <laughs> further on with the happy hours, they get a little more raggedy, and so right. it's like you starting to pull from the bottom of the drawer. Uh, did you start off with a suit at first, or what? All suited up. <laughs> well, we were doing our more formal with the SVS polos, and I was like, man, we're getting goofy. And I think it started NFL draft night and my Niners stuff, and then we just kind of right. went from there, and just got a yeah, little more fun. Go. Goofy, I think good. You're. you're your audience probably appreciates that, man, because it's just yeah. you two guys just being real with them, you know? And I think they connect That's with that. What we like. Yeah. Right, and Nick fun. keeps trying to give my clothes away. So, yeah. I, there, somebody <laughs> asked if we're going to do a Larry t shirt giveaway. And I said, game worn. We're going to give a game worn, unwashed t shirt. There you uh, go. We've yet to do that yet. So we'll see. I guess we should also be professional and actually say uh, what you guys do over there for the folks who don't know. Yeah. Go for it. Well, I mean, I'll take this one, Larry. I know you guys have been uh, great and, and, you know, all of you have reviewed SVS products. So, uh, you know, I think that's uh, a great sort of segue into this. You know, we're a manufacturer of uh, speakers, subwoofers, wireless audio and accessories. We'll be giving away some accessories tonight. Um, we've been around for, uh, oh my gosh, uh, almost 21 years now. Um, really started as a uh, subwoofer direct uh, manufacturer, one of the first companies to be shipping via the internet. Um, sort of made our name as a, a company that delivered, you know, the ultimate in uh, performance, bang for the buck. And, uh, you know, since uh, launching with a bunch of big cylinder subwoofers, we, we sort of brought it to the more sealed cabinet, ported in sealed variety, uh, and then branched off into two different speaker series, wireless audio, now accessories. Um, and now our, our uh, speakers and, and accessories are the fastest growing part of our business. So I think the subwoofer has sort of been established, but, um, you know, we're really trying to make inroads as a full-on audio brand and sort of outgrow that notion that we are a subwoofer company uh, nice. and so far so good i think we're, we're doing pretty well with that yeah nice. And, nice. and what do you guys do there at, at svs larry why don't you go first so uh, my role i am the national training manager for the brand so i'm the geek that interacts with all our retail partners and we do in-store training virtual training teach them about the product uh give guys kind of a what I love to do with the demos, which you, you all know, mm -hmm. with the art of the demo, make sure you understand uh, what we're listening for, how to demonstrate our speakers, our subwoofers, our wireless products, how to set them up properly. And uh, at our events, I set up all of the systems and calibrate them. And mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten to where I can do it just by ear now, which is kind of fun. And I don't use any of the mics and stuff like you guys do, but uh, that's uh, a little more time consuming when you're doing all of our events. But I just now I'm doing it all virtually. So recording meetings right. and interacting with our guys that way. And I was telling you earlier, we built a website for our retail partners to learn about our products, which Nick and his team have helped out with. Very smart. Yeah, so 
I'm a VP of marketing. I'll be involved with everything from, you know, social media posts to, uh, you know, helping to launch products, get the website up to date. Um, you know, a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well, uh, working with uh, these fabulous gentlemen right here from the Daily Hi-Fi uh, on a regular basis, which, uh, you know, just <laughs> makes my life fun. Um, so you know, they- <laughs> <laughs> I probably get more glory than I deserve, but, uh, you know, we try to have a lot of fun. We try to be real, uh, mm-hmm. you know, focus on our community quite a bit and, and uh, you know, just engaging them with uh, passion for high end audio and high performance audio. And that's really it. You know, that's, that's what we're all about. Yeah, man, for sure. We have who do we have in the chat, Michael? And we got all kinds of folks. All our regulars, of course. We got SI Services, Kangas in the house, Legendary Brown Note, and lots and lots of guys saying some love. See a whole lot of love for SVS, man. Mm-hmm. These guys are digging it. Optimus Vader's here. Ike's here. Fred, because I'm, I'm taking notes here. So we chop yeah. this up yeah, and we, we make it audio only version. version. We make it so you could scrub through and easily get to the parts that you want. So I'm the note taking guy. There you go. <laughs> so if you see me over here doing something, I'm taking notes. Got a lot of folks that own SVS. We got Larry. Oh, man, that thing moves when you go to click it. So yeah. Tristan's got his PB16s. Junior's got the PB3000. Hey, the other it's Larry fun. hangs out with us all the time. So uh, Larry Stubel, yeah. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I see you yeah. every yeah. single week. Yeah, there he uh, is. I think- Fred215 is also uh, represented the Philly area. He's been to some of our in-person events, if I'm not mistaken. So, Fred, oh, yeah. how are you doing, man? Thank you for oh, yeah. tuning into us here virtually. Appreciate that. And as always, man, Optimus Vader, always dropping the super chats, man. Appreciate that, brother. So it's welcome to all. Welcome all He's to giving therapy, time. therapy time. Yeah. Therapy. All right. Therapy. That's okay, man. We therapy for some people, which right. I don't want that pressure of being someone's shrink, but you know what? If it helps you get you know, <laughs> have a smile today. So he believes you know, in you're going to give away a PB-16. So we'll just have to wait. <laughs> through, so. Wednesday is his birthday. <laughs> don't make any promises I can't deliver. <laughs> yeah, I can send you a picture of one. <laughs> <laughs> a sound demo. How about that? <laughs> All right, oh, so Tr- Tristan said he's even got some of the, man, it did it again. Height elevation speakers, very yeah. cool. I gotta say those 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 prime elevation speakers are like top notch. Um, they are. They're I, so much fun. Those are like literally one of the few products I haven't heard from SVS. I haven't heard any of the cylinders or the uh, the heights. But um, everybody that's yep. reviewed, everybody that's on them, definitely are great. Fans. I mean, they're they're great for a living room Atmos setup, yeah. like for sure. No cutting into anything. You know, just mount them up there. You know, you can get some white speaker cable and, you know, angle bl- blended in. Yeah, yeah. They have the angle baffle. I'll pull them up. So yeah. one of the- I'll pull up my really ugly room. So if you, uh, this is my game room, man cave, office, just place where we throw stuff. So I can't point properly, but that's right, them right, right there. there. Good aim. Um, those are the elevations. And you were right on, right on the note there. The, what's really cool about them is they're, if you're an installer, instead of taking 45 minutes to an hour per speaker, if the wire's there, it's about a 10 minute job. Yeah. And th- unlike an in ceiling or an in wall speaker, they're way more capable in regards to frequency response, where you can cross them over, being directional versus, you know, kind of shooting straight down like an in ceiling speaker does. You right. get more spatial audio. If you happen to put them, I, I love mine as a top middle solution, just like you were saying, kind of in a living room. I have a pair here and a pair downstairs. And the blend between the front and rear stage can totally change your Atmos height effect experience. Yeah. And it's a single-handedly the best thing I've done to my theater since Blu-rays come out is by adding a pair of those. I mean, I, I think, and I think you guys having this white one that's up on screen, that's huge too, because everybody's got a lot, of, a lot of people got white ceilings and I've seen some installs where they're just, they just blend in. They totally just, they got five yeah. on the ceiling, you know, one for the voice of God as well. Pretty sweet. Thanks, uh, the, thanks, Tristan. Sorry, thanks, Tristan, for the for the super chat. He says PB sixteen and ultra, ultra also. <laughs> so, can you use these as at most height speakers? How does that work? You could really use them as any speaker you want: front, center, side, height effects, uh, top, middle, top, front. However, you want them to go, uh, because they're not a frequency limited speaker like a lot of those toppers that are out there you could really use it for anything. And the way it works is it uh, it comes in the box. See, I knew I grabbed these for a reason. 
comes yeah, with a two no, piece mount. Happy speakers. Yeah, I mean, have most here. I'm looking at these. But, you know, think about how there. There's an image right there. Is the top middle. So like I have Denon receivers everywhere. I set them as top middle. Um, you can set those up there on the wall, and this piece of the mount, if you can see, it's got two little pegs on it. This goes on the back of the speaker. And then this piece here, you can see those keyholes through my shirt there. Depending on which way you want the speaker to go on the wall, as you can see on the image there on the screen, mm -hmm. you can have them shooting straight down or you can turn them on your side uh, or on the side and kind of put them back in a corner where the walls meet. But what they're not, they're not toppers. So if you look at a topper, they're typically frequency limited to about 120 hertz or higher. You want to cross the elevation at 80 hertz or so, you're going to get more of the experience from explosions, more roars from the monsters, uh, more effects other than just kind of whooshing noises happening up above you. And because of the way the tweeter is designed being slightly extended out of the cabinet, the range on it is a lot bigger than a conventional end ceiling or end wall speaker. And if I can keep geeking out, if you guys want, if you look at toppers, the tweeters are always recessed. Yep. Um, further back than the driver. So there's no spreading into the room. And this is the exact opposite thought process here. We want you to have that effect to where you are totally enveloped from front to back. And it it's unbelievable. Smith, our lead designer and engineer on this, um, made a great product here. And uh, Nick, if I'm correct, it's our number one selling speaker. There we go. Yeah, we kind of launched it and it was like a niche product. We're thinking, you know, maybe some people will adopt, maybe not. This is fairly early in uh, Dolby Atmos timeline. Um, and then it quickly became our most popular speaker just based on the fact that people were adding it to other brand systems. You know, right. it's a very neutral speaker, so it doesn't have like its own sonic signature. It, it can blend, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, you know, a, a brighter speaker or maybe, you know, one that's a little bit uh, more mid, mid bass heavy. And, uh, you know, it just fills those effects so robustly as, uh, you know, Larry was saying, it's got great dispersion characteristics. So all of those things play really, really well. Um, and then I think the mounting aspect of it just makes yeah. it a, a solution that a lot of people can play with. And I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention the little logo that's on the front of the mm -hmm. grill is magnetic. <laughs> so we know how like uh, particular audio people can be. So you yep. can take that logo and rotate it based on whether you have it on its side or straight or upside down, uh, just because I know people would you know, get all finicky about the logo being upside down. So we tried to think of everything with the speaker, and I think that's why it became our most popular model of, uh, of all of our lines. Hey, Larry, you mentioned that bracket. Is that the same bracket that you used to ceiling mount this, or is that Absolutely. a different one? Okay. So it's the same piece. So I, I didn't really talk about it. So the pieces, they just kind of keyhole into each mm -hmm. other. Right. And then in the box, there is this piece here, and you're not going to be able to see all the detail, but um, you can see the logo bigger. on that. And what it is, it is a mag magnetic piece that slides into the mount. Let me do it this way. And what it does is it locks it so that the keyhole doesn't come loose and you don't have a speaker falling on your head. Right. Uh, but one thing we also like to talk about with this and you guys, when you do calibrations and room setups, I think one of the bigger issues people come about with an end ceiling speaker is that you always absolutely got to have it perfectly set. Otherwise you don't get a lot of the effect. Once again, because this is a direct radiating directional speaker into the room, you could have, they don't have to be perfectly aligned. You could have one that's a couple feet ahead of the other. And after you do your room correction with Odyssey or YPAO or whatever else is out there um, or setting it up with your mics independently, mm -hmm. they'll work just fine, even if they're, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, off from each other. Yeah. Like you can see on my ceiling here, this is my setup upstairs. Like these things are not ideally placed, but, uh, you know, look how versatile they are. Like this is mounted here on the back. This is mounted, you know, upside down. And so are these or I mean, facing down. I guess you could say. Um, yeah, and then our a, couch is right below the picture of the dude here and uh, Walter. Awesome. Love it. We have a deal. That in is San like Antonio. perfect prototypical like elevation system yeah. right there. You got the beams, you got all sorts of weird angles in the room and like who has a perfect square room yep. to like outfit with speakers all the time. So, I mean, our president has a similar setup down in his basement where he's got this weird random pillar right in the middle of it. And he just mounted one of the uh, two of the elevations there, one on its side, one straight up and down to accommodate, you know, the uh, tweeter at ear, le uh, ear level. And, uh, you know, it's the best you can do. Sometimes you just got to make yep. do with the room. Exactly. And get four four white ones. I'm keep yeah. looking over there. Yeah. 
think I knew yeah. for a while. We have, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, mix and match black and white. I, I originally only had the front two um, before, and then when I when I added the rear two, oh, it's night and day. Night and day. On the, it's, there's a huge difference between two and four up yeah. there. Yeah, oh, totally. Absolutely. Totally. So I only have two, so uh, I'm gonna have to hit yeah. you. How do you how do you mount the sub up there now? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. We did yeah. have a bar. There was a bar that mounted one of our cylinder subwoofers in their roof one time. Nice. And we have like a little blog post about that, but yeah. it was a little yeah. ridiculous. We got a lot of comments about how unsafe that is. I'm like, hey, this is a uh, authorized dealer. We trust them. <laughs> yeah, you can put a cylinder subwoofer in your rafters if you want to go there. Well, so, here you go. I mean, you you can have a subwoofer on the ground to annoy your you know neighbors below you, and then a subwoofer yeah. uh, you know up top to annoy the, your yeah. your 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 neighbors above you. Why not? Why not? So, I got a couple and questions they, over here. Papa Dope says, uh, "Can they be placed um, like head height when you're seated? Would that work?" Absolutely. Yeah, you'd probably want to turn them sideways at that point to kind of turn them back into the room. So, we have a lot of people that use them as surrounds and turn them mm -hmm. on their side. And kind of put them back this way so that the sound is kind of going more back into the listening space. Um, what they're not, I see people asking about toppers. They're not toppers. Uh, a topper is a frequency limited speaker that is meant to kind of create that pseudo effect up above you. Um, and so if you do have that, you need to have the perfect room for it. Like I, I live here in Texas, so ceiling fans can impact it. Mm -hmm. Popcorn texture on your ceiling can impact it. You the know, um, the Focal oh, Lady you know, expressed it the best way. There's a lot of obstacles with ceiling yes. bounce. You know, there can yeah. be a lot of obstacles. So yeah. it can um, be done right, but it's there's there's a lot of variables. Definitely. We call it unpredictable. It's an yeah. unpredictable audio experience. And I know a lot of people when they're trying to dial it. in their sound, they don't like yeah. things that are unpredictable. They yeah. want to be able to get it, you know, the way they want it. So yeah. It's uh, something gotta do like with our it. events we just have um we use a a two by for a two by six at our events where we're touring the country mm -hmm. and it folds in half so we can transport it, but it just leans up against the wall and we have the mount on it. And that's how we nice. do it. That's at how events. you do the demo. We'll yeah. be at a, we'll be in a warehouse doing this. Or if you've been in the, you know, the big Nebraska furniture mart stores, they're massive and we take on their entire space by just leaning these posts up. Um, so there's, there's ways to work around it. Uh, if you can't get stuff on the walls, but it is just four screws simply in the wall to put up the elevation speakers. So are your white ones, are they white, like a gloss finish or is it a matte finish? It's a piano gloss white. So we have the, the two in the elevation, there's three finishes. There's our black ash. That's the wood look mm -hmm. piano gloss black. And then the piano gloss white and the gloss white comes with the white cloth grill and all of our uh, gloss finishes are 10 coat hand applied piano lacquer, just like you'd see on like a Yamaha wow. grand piano. So it's it's not just a vinyl wrap like you see yeah. on some other products. It's a beautiful finish. The best finish sure. I've seen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, if you guys uh, are interested, I'm gonna leave my affiliate link, right, Chana? Hey, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, just start yeah. dropping them. <laughs> I mean, awesome. there's there's some. Um, let's see if I can pull up this picture. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's on Pinterest. Oh, get out of here, Pinterest. Oh, there's so many systems out there at the elevation. There Ceiling of, mm -hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Just let me find the right. And then Streamyard is not oh, there. There it is. Like so. Here's like the white ones, even like on a beige colored wall. Yeah. Like that looks great. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure once the lights are off, you don't see anything there. No. Yeah, and you can see that that system has a uh, a set of ultra surrounds there on the side on the sides, the yeah. Towers and ultra center, and the ultra surrounds are a cool speaker too, where you can do quite a bit with them. And if you you know as a side surround speaker, they're really awesome because they do have uh, two sets of binding posts, yep. so you can actually run it in by amp by wire, however you choose to do it, or you can separate it into two different channels and kind of use it as a side and surround speaker in one. You just run uh, two sets of wire or four conductor wire to it. And so yeah. one half of the speaker can be surround and one can be surround back or one can be side and one can be uh, surround. There's a lot of opportunity there. So you can run a seven channel surround system with five speakers. I, I found the picture I was thinking about in my head. Here it is. It's very <laughs> small, but check it out. That's dope. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Hmm. Look at that. The tiny oh, okay. picture, yeah. but. 
Oh, I use that's, that in my trainings, man. That's, that's uh, a lot what, of SVS. Thirteen man. point something. I can't remember. It's it's yeah. <laughs> thirteen. I mean, they got 15. the center channels as surrounds. You can see yeah. those center channels laid horizontally. Oh, they're vertical. Yeah, vertically, I should say. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting. Yeah, man. Uh, I think more there. people should be getting in, into home theater. Personally, yeah. you know, with everybody stuck at home. You know, I know like Tenet is out and people are going out to watch that. And then I know Mulan, maybe, maybe, maybe that, you know, fewer people are interested in that. Maybe, I don't know, but I want to see the in-home stuff kind of like taken off. I had you a guy tell me just yesterday. He's like, uh, home theater is dead. I'm like, dude, what rock are you under, man? Mm. Dude, home theater, Who I think there's more, uh, just some dude, a two channel guy. On my, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I just kept asking, okay. like, why are you even on my channel? You know, if if like you think home theater sucks, and you know, if you do I mean, that, the, fine. the, the <laughs> frustrating part throwing. about that is that there's so much more content than there's ever been, and not yeah. only new content, like yeah. the old stuff's being remastered. So if yeah. anyone has that stance, yeah, it's like you're just not listening, or you're not yeah. paying attention to what's actually going on in the world of content, yeah, which is what drives the fun and the passion for this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I. To me, I, I'm with you there. Like, I, I just completely agree, mm -hmm. Michael. Like, there should be this, and we're kind of seeing it. I think yeah. more people are spending more time dialing yep. in their systems, getting more sure. channels added, you know, adopting Atmos, whatever it might be. Dude, um, people are, but it's are certainly, adopting um, external amplifiers. They're like, they're all yeah. jazzed up about it, you know. Then you know it's serious when people yeah, start speaking of that, which, you know, taking it serious. <laughs> speaking of which, I have to just give a quick shout out, uh, Hi-Fi Summit coming up October 22nd to 26th. And we have uh, our silver sponsor. Uh, they signed up was Parasound. So I have the A52 plus awesome external app, like you're saying, Chana. So quick shout out to them. Um, yeah, get your early bird tickets if you haven't already. What we else? We'll be there. Yeah. We will be there. Yes. And I mean, I don't know if you guys want to talk about the future of Hi-Fi shows a little bit. I mean, we're in strange times now, so I don't yeah. think we can quite put a nail in the, yeah. the coffin of the in-person. Let's but go like, there. I just appreciate what you guys are doing. Like, Thanks, man. And if, that's not just pandering. Like, I, we were a part of the first one. We're going to be a part of the second one. And, uh, you know, I think the the way you have to engage people towards high performance audio is in a very direct way. Like, you're not going to get new people into this without sort of taking that approach that you guys are doing where it's it's very direct and it's very much like giving them a reason to show up. Um, these regional shows are great for what they are, mm -hmm. but, you know, we're seeing the limitations more than ever now. And, you know, I think what you guys are building is, is hopefully going to be a model that's sustainable. And, you know, what we were talking about offline before we got on here, which, Joe, I don't want to spill any, uh, yeah, no, you know, you spoil anything there. But, like, that's pretty damn cool. And, and I hope that can uh, evolve into something that gives people a legit demo experience. So uh, we're all we'll for see. it. We love what you guys are doing. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> now I'm giving away my eighth two. <laughs> on. Well, we got all kinds of craziness on today's show. <laughs> we gotta, we, I got, if we want more uh, people watching, we got to follow the SVS formula. I don't know if you guys have watched their, uh, what are they called? Uh, audio file. Virtual. Happy, virtual audio oh, happy. file. Happy hour. The happy yeah, hour. We're always giving right. something away. So we link to that down in the description. So make sure to click on that and subscribe if you'd like to win free stuff. I know yeah. people personally who have won from free stuff. So, you know, part of our group. Some of the people are in a group like, hey, yeah. I just won. I think two I think, people uh, in our group, uh, right? Croson um, got the um, SVS Croson wireless won. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he won. Um, yeah, we have a few people in there that have won some stuff. So make sure to follow. You guys get a ton of people in there. Like, well, it's not. I mean, and I hope it's not just people going in there to like win something because that obviously is a draw. We don't yeah. think, you know, we're not, That's we're right. not naive. We know people want to sh to win stuff, especially now. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. People maybe aren't making as much as they used to, but the same token, we also just try to have fun like you guys do. We just get out there yeah. and sort of, you know, talk about stuff that's you know, to benefit people, but riff on whatever, uh, you know, yeah. going on in the audio industry, the future of hi-fi, whatever. And I think that people appreciate that we're not trying to be like above over their heads. You know, sometimes we get a little geeky and then we sort of try to, you know, back round it, it back into like yeah. a more uh, personal conversation. But, uh, yeah. you know, with the guests, we just try to have fun. And I think that's why, you know, there's, there's a great energy with what you guys are doing and what we're doing. It's, it's just sort of a similar approach. Yeah. You guys yeah, are no, it. Somebody's in the comments saying Randall, uh, is saying you had Sandy Gross on there, and he said that alone was worth it. So, yeah, that's we've awesome. had yeah, DJ of, Jazzy Jeff. That yeah, was a, DJ, a seminal moment in my life. That's awesome. Yeah, how yeah. many of you guys? Who was the guy last time again? I forgot him. 
Who's uh, that? Jeff Dorgay from Tone Audio. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I like to argue with Jeff. Uh, on, yeah. but I'll always argue with him. Yeah. <laughs> so Nick, guy, you men- Nick, you mentioned uh, content earlier. What is maybe some, this is some kind of lighthearted, but what is um, maybe a movie that's coming out, hopefully in the near future, that you're most excited about for home theater? I will always defer to Gary when it or Gary, Larry, <laughs> Larry, yeah. Larry when it comes who's, to the movie who's the Gary? Reality. We need we need <laughs> to find Gary. the Gary. <laughs> What's that fifth tile? <laughs> yeah. Darn it. Um, what are you most I'm, excited about? What's coming up? Yeah, we were Tenet? talking about Tenant earlier. You know, yeah. you guys mentioned that. That's pretty and, wild. You know, I've got a Dolby Cinema up the street, and I am just mm-hmm. I. I, we've all talked about, I see 200 movies a year in a theater and now I haven't been to a movie theater since March. Yeah, and, right. and my wife and I were talking about that. I think that's one thing that I'm missing a ton. So I want to go see tenant. Yeah. Um, my brother's calling me. Let me ignore that. <laughs> uh, but you know, th- as far as what's coming, mission impossible stoked for that one. I want to yeah. see what they're going to do there. And you know, we have the Snyder cut coming on HBO uh, to see if maybe that makes Justice League better. So and there's a there's well, a Bond flick coming too. The Bond um, teasers yeah, have been dreadful, yeah. but I, you know, I always look forward to a good Bond flick. There's yeah. usually one or two scenes in there that uh, car chases whatever oh, yeah, that totally. give you a, a nice little demo. And I think Mission Impossible does a better job than Bond with the demos. Yeah. I know you would probably agree, Larry, but when it comes to the demos, I think Mission Impossible has it over Bond series. Tenet oh, definitely, Tenet definitely is going to have that, some oh, great Dune? demo material. Uh, I've never been able to make it past about 20 minutes of the original Dune. So, <laughs> yeah. Larry, get and, some and, of that spice. Nick, also, do you guys have projector setups or what? I don't. Just, just a, uh, no? Okay. No, uh, no projector setup? No, I am a plasma TV guy still. Ooh, I have nice. Panasonic uh, Z series nice. downstairs and another Panasonic plasma in my bedroom. In here, nothing major. Just a 43-inch LED, but uh, I'm a TV yeah. guy. I had the uh, plasma, the VT60, the Panasonic. It's in my yeah. bedroom. Yeah, that's Love that. that. You know what happened to mine? That's why I went OLED. With my wife got all mad uh, because our teenager messed up a bunch of stuff in the pantry, and these cans fell down on the, these little cans fell down on the ground. So she starts just throwing them. Can you believe this? What is he doing? And one of them bounced on the ground and hit the plasma TV like dead center. And then all of a sudden, like I was watching something, all of a sudden. It just starts getting black from the outside to the center, and I'm like, "Oh my god, what's going on?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was done. That's that's how. Um, that's why I got an OLED because I think a lot of people are waiting to, uh, for uh, what is it, 1984 thing? Is that what it's called? The Wonder Woman one? Yeah, I don't know. If they, oh, yeah, that yeah. one's gonna be big. Uh, yeah, just because she's <clears throat> she's not too <laughs> rough to look at. Um. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I want to see, I want to see uh, more direct. I want to see that win. You know what I mean? Because I'm willing to pay. A lot of people were complaining oh, about Mulan. Stream, were like, you mean? So I have, I have two young kids, and we have Disney Plus, and people were complaining like, thirty bucks. You know, like that's a lot of money. I'm like, you know how much I would have spent if I would have went to a movie yeah. and brought everybody. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, the we problem is their experience time. sucks. They're like the experience is not the same, and so I was like taking my wife's taking pictures. I like I don't know, our, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Our experience over here is pretty good. <laughs> SB three thousand bumping over here. Our experience is good. Yeah, and what's everybody us, talking about? I want to see more direct. Stuff. Yeah, Joe, oh, Joe and I were talking about that because I would have spent sixty bucks minimum, you know, for the three of us. On popcorn and, then, and all that, John. And yeah, and then uh, what do you call it? Um, and then going to the bathroom, you miss parts of the movie. So you can actually pause it and all that stuff. And I just, oh, where is it? Oh, is it here? No, it's not here. Um, our theater does a popcorn card. So for $30 a year, I can just walk in and just get a small oh, bag wow. of popcorn or upgrade it for two bucks to a large. So I just walk in there with two bucks, get a large popcorn, go home. Nice. <laughs> you know? wait, 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 wait. Get the popcorn from where? The movie theater. From the movie theater. The and movie then he goes theater. home and watches it. Yeah. <laughs> <That's our delivery. laughs> you know? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we, we're, you know town is four square miles so like getting to the movie theater is half a mile away it's not it's not a big thing but it's not a good theater so uh, yeah see, and I'm we had a great experience that's all i know yeah so you know i think when you take a family of five to dolby cinema those tickets are about 20 bucks a pop yeah. wow and i do it yeah but uh, we we don't see everything 
in Dolby Cinema, but I I do if I'm on the road. Yeah, we actually went and I... saw Tenet on on a Dolby Cinema. It's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah. so how was it compared to your normal viewing experience? I'm just kind of curious. What's that? You got a pretty crazy setup. You got theater seats. You got yeah. a huge screen. You got yeah. port. You know, you got everything. So what, the one the one thing like? the one thing that's odd to me is they have a um like a wall behind you, so it does block some of the rear sound effects. Hmm. You know, hmm. especially if you're reclined pretty good in those. Um, but the sound in there is incredible. It acts as very, very well. Lots of LFE, um, you know, a completely immersive experience. Definitely a huge screen, you know. It's mm-hmm. definitely probably one of the best in this area for sure, um, you know. Yeah. Man, and I've oh, been I'm to trying that- to sell the home thing. What are you doing, Michael? <laughs> See, you need subs on the ceiling, I'm telling yeah. you. I mean, I'll go, I'll go do those, but I mean – I would much re- much rather just enjoy because I can watch movies all day, every day here, anytime. Pause, you know, cook my own. I can bring steak yeah. into the I, like theater room if I serve want your to, own you know? hot fudge sundae at home. Yeah, with a beer yeah. for direct so home. Yeah. Would Rocker you is talking my no- my language right there? Yeah, I'm an ice cream and movies guy all the time. Would yeah. you have watched the movie at the theater if it was released direct and you could pay twenty five, thirty bucks? Would you have gone anyway? Be honest. If I would pay thirty bucks, I mean, honestly, it's gonna be me and my son watching it. So for okay. thirty bucks, I mean, that's still well, yeah, because we would have spent fifteen bucks a piece. Yeah, absolutely. You want to just watch it home? And we have it replay. We have replay. We're gonna watch it again. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or as many as many times as you watch. I think what did so. Angela say? Because the biggest reason why we go to the cinema is because I don't want to wait that extra month or two months before it comes out. You know, I want to go yeah, see it. Pretty- and then if it's good enough, then I'm going to buy it. And I'll watch it in my own home theater. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody complained about our kids screaming either. Oh, yeah. Right. They don't look at they don't turn around and look at you. Give you that look like, hey, that's right. Shut that kid up. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you come shut them up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, um, people are saying they love their home theater, you know, better than the theater. And that's, I think that's the amazing thing with technology today, with the great products that are out there on the market, you can have a kick butt cinema in your own home theater that kind of supersedes a lot of, you know, poorly designed theaters out there, you know? Yeah. And you guys know when you walk into a theater and you're like, man, this sucks. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of those experiences, I, I, especially if I hear ceiling rattle or a speaker that's blown. And oh. Somebody's meant. I've heard that too. Yeah. Blown, uh, speaker. blown speaker. <laughs> RPX system in Salt Lake City, Utah, the night it came out, you know, and I was like, man, that ruined it. So I, I don't get that at home. I actually went to get a manager one time because literally the volume was just so subpar. Mm-hmm. Um, it was not exciting. I'm like, look, I'm not sitting through a movie if it's not going to at least rumble my seat, you know, crank it up some, you know, forget that 65 dB junk. You know? <laughs> Let's get this. I think that's a bigger issue outside of metro areas. Like I live in Rhode Island and, you know, we have a couple theaters that are probably about 45 minutes away that will deliver that. But mm-hmm. the neighborhood theaters around me, it's all just so substandard. Like sure. you're just like waiting for a moment to get excited about. And the audio just always disappoints. Like I can count on one hand the time I've been to a theater locally that's like actually impressed me. Um, <laughs> so you know, I, I think that's what a lot of people are dealing with. If you're not in that you know metro area where they have these big theaters. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, um, it's funny here in Mammoth. Uh, some uh, new people bought our theater, and they have a few other theaters. And I was like, hey, you know, they had this ribbon cutting or whatever. So I went. Talk to the owner. I was like, hey, you know, I'd love to, you know, do a tour of your system and your processors and this, that, and the other because my viewers would love it. And they're like, well, if you want to come down to one of our other theaters because we're just upgrading that one and this system in here, really just not that good. And I was just like, hey, okay, whatever. But, um, but yeah, I think that's the, if the theater hasn't been remodeled in a while, like, yeah, you know, it's just not going to be as good as your home si- system. Yeah. Joe's got a couple questions. I think you want to ask. Yeah, them? no, not yet. But I was just kind of, right, kind of going off what we're saying. Like, right. have you guys ever thought at SVS to do something kind of like a a, a version of the home theater in the box that doesn't suck? You know, like a package deal, but it's not garbage. Like, every, it actually sound good. 
Do you well, guys I mean, have we that have because I seen bundles. I see bundles on your site. Yeah, I mean, we have a, a prime satellite 5.1 system, which is you know an, a one thousand dollar system, a good entry level. You know, I think the challenge that we have is we're not going to make an AV receiver. You know, we have our two channel wireless Got integrated it. amp that the uh, sound base, but like. Once you start playing in the receiver game, you're starting to try to keep up with codecs and, you know, all sorts of connections. And then people are demanding so much from you. And it's like, that's where it's like, we'll give you the speakers and the sub, but like, you're going to have to piece together that source component. Um, So I think that's where, you know, we're not ready to make quite that jump into that level of an audio brand. Um, But speakers and subwoofers, I think are, you know, arguably the most important aspect of creating an immersive home theater. So, you know, I think a thousand dollars is a good starting price for, for some people. Um, but you know, we also don't want to pigeonhole, pigeonhole ourselves into being sort of like, uh, you know, out of the box, like on, you know, something that's going to be disappointing on any level. So that's so kind of the attack we've taken. Just go buy something from your site and one other site. That's yeah. it. Just yeah. get your over there and get it pretty much everything. You guys recommend the receiver. You recommend the source component. You know, we'll do the speakers and subs. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think that's a, a happy medium that we're, ha- we're, we're good with now. I was, yeah, I was gets- actually, go ahead. I was just gonna say that that system for nine ninety nine. It's one of our favorite ones to demo. And I think uh, two three years ago when I first met you guys at CES, we had that demo in that room, and people were walking in thinking it was the bigger system because of the way you tune it. Yeah. And you know, with if you've got a budget of say you know under two grand and you're trying to get a TV as well, you can do a fifty five inch TV. You can do a receiver, and you can do our prime satellite five point one, and get all the cabling. And that's what a lot of people kind of don't think about. They think you have to just break the bank on home theater, and yeah. you don't. What did you say, Chano? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, I, I was there, yeah, and, and the uh, 5.1 was next to the Ultra Towers yep. in the Ultra Center, and everybody thought it was from the Ultra Towers. I was just like, oh, wow, this sounds great. And um, what I was going to say is I actually like your package of that 5.0 with the Prime Pinnacles. Prime Pinnacles, Prime Center. And two satellites, like that was great for what twenty one hundred dollars on sale yeah. or whatever. But I mean, you know, toss in a five hundred dollar AVR, and you've got a pretty banging setup. You know, so get that setup, AVR, and a projector setup, and you're good. Never Couple elevations, again. maybe from the ceiling. Yeah, yeah some elevations. Yeah, yeah, and no, com- have- no complaints. Yeah. We have people buy that anyway. Five- in a set of elevations and you have a fourteen hundred dollar five point one point two system mm-hmm. that's ridiculous everybody should do it yes everybody should be it. killing it right now i'm it. sure you guys are <laughs> yeah um, actually i think okay, uh, so the, the 5.1 <laughs> was my first svs uh review i think that's the first thing that nick sent out so. it's great yeah yeah so i i do have some questions that i have if there are any in the in the chat We'll get to those as well, and then I think we'll we can take some calls later on too, yeah. because I know you guys don't typically take calls on your uh, happy hours, right? No, I we're gonna put you, on the spot, spot, you know what I mean. A little extra put pressure you on the there. spot a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I so uh, I have a question. One is uh, about uh, the use of DSP, right? So I know that you guys have some DSP on some of the subs, a lot of the subs, and so I'm kind of curious as to the philosophy of using DSP because it's always a trade-off between uh, low frequency extension and SPL, right? Given the size of the enclosure. So how do you balance those two? Like, is it going to play extremely loud or is it going to go down to super low frequencies? Like, how do you figure? Well, oh, you want to take point? Yeah, and I'll, yeah, Gary, I'll add to Gary it. really likes this conversation. If you want to give the Gary answer, then I will come back and piggyback on it. Um, but it's in all of our subwoofers um, and we even put it inside like our prime wireless speakers and stuff too, where the DSP just allows it to have a little bit more control, a little more breathing room, uh, recognize if a signal's coming in too hot or if there's a spike. And with the uh, processors and chips and stuff that are in there now, they can really be taken a beating from the signal and make it sharper, make it cleaner, go lower when necessary but without interfering with the signal. And I think that's what a lot of people get worried about with some DSPs that are out there. They're a little harsh or a little uh, too soft. And with the analog devices, DSP chipset that's in the products, uh, it's not just a a cheesy chipset. It's actually a high-end chipset in there to recognize the signal that's coming in there and process it properly. I wanna say it's 50,000 megahertz. So 
Uh, it's 50, me- 50 megahertz. 50 megahertz, not 50. 50,000 50, times per second. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, no, can you give me an example I'm of a cheesy one then? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have <laughs> I mean, to. I'll uh, add on to that too. I think one of the uh, the areas that, you know, we started making subwoofers, we had these massive ported subwoofers. When we started making sealed cabinet subwoofers, that's where DSP can really serve your advantage in terms of room gain. And you can make a much smaller, more compact subwoofer sound a lot bigger than it is and dig a little bit deeper than it probably should just by harnessing the room gain. And so when we're voicing, uh, you're not really voicing, when we're tuning our subwoofers and designing the DSP curves, uh, it allows us to create a, a sense of, of uh, bigness, I guess, which is a horrible word, with our sealed cabinet subwoofers that allow you to achieve a lot more just by using the room, the in, in-room frequency response to get more output and deeper extension that you would normally get. So I think, you know, when you're talking about value that DSP adds to a subwoofer, that's one area that with the sealed cabinet models um, definitely pays dividends, you know, from a, from a designer's perspective and sort of getting the most out of your subwoofers. Got it. Anybody else have any follow-up questions to that? No. I, I mean, I, I think the other, the other part too is just the in-room tuning. You know, we have our app, which uh, I know Larry could spend the next uh, half an hour just talking about all the different features of the app. But the, uh, <laughs> you know, the custom DSP tuning that allows you to, you know, correct uh, nut peaks and nulls with the parametric EQ. And, and Michael, I know you have given the best overview of our app that I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. So if you want to see all the details, then I would check out Youth Man's channel. Um, but again, it's just an added value that people have when they're trying to get their base dialed in because a little goes a long way when you're making these adjustments. So, um, you know, that's why we invest in the DSP and, and make it such a big deal with our subwoofers um, to give people that ability to tweak to perfection, which I think a lot of people appreciate. Yeah, and it's a, it's a uh, parametric EQ. So a lot of people don't realize a lot of times that if you're using a two channel setup, you might not have, you know, Odyssey or whatever that's in an AVR. Yep. So you're trying, to, you're trying to blend that thing and cross it over and adjust for the room and so a lot of the two channel stuff doesn't have that, but the app just pop it in there. If you have a U mic one and some and free REW, just figure out what what you should do and then type in the settings in there, right? Yeah. And there's there's a lot in there too. There's even variable uh, phase control too. If you look at a lot of products out there that offer phase control in a subwoofer, it's typically zero or yeah, one eighty. Or 180. Yeah. yeah. Here you can do in steps. So if you have one that needs to be sixty six degrees and one that needs to be eighty four just based on where they're placed on a wall. I don't know where I pull those numbers from, but you can totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's here's a great question. Um, you know, and I guess to jump off of Paul's question here is, is there such thing as too much DSP? So how much well, does other DSP, such as mini DSP, affect the SVS DSPs? And like, can you really- do that? Yeah, it, you would just not enable some of the settings inside, like the PEQs and stuff. You would just utilize your settings, run it flat, and primarily just be running, uh, adjusting your volume and maybe phase and stuff at that point if you're going to be doing some real fine tuning. Um, I haven't personally played with any of the mini DSP stuff, but I know a lot of you guys love to geek out on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, and then correct here, me if I'm wrong here. Oh. Is uh, and going off that last question is sometimes the DSP can add a little bit of a delay, right? Like a slight delay. And so I think in an AVR, it doesn't matter so much because it can, you can delay the, uh, you can delay the actual, the rest of the speakers yep. to account for it, right? So a lot yep. of times people are like, hey, how come it's reading the sub is like way further? I'm like, well, it's, you know, sometimes it's going through some stuff, and, you know, the way that bass works. And so just use that setting, you know, don't like measure it because that's going to sometimes give you the wrong, um, uh, delay, right? But I think uh, to add to his his question, to answer the question, is when you start stacking DSP on DSP, you start getting more delay too. So you have to take that into account. Yeah. What else? Very what were you going to say, Chana? Sorry. Oh, um, and then there's somebody else who had a question here. Who does the final tuning, final mm. fine tuning at SVS? Who's your sound master? Is there that what it's called? So, I mean, with all of our products, we obviously go through the you know, laboratory uh, precision testing first, where we bring it in an anechoic chamber, take measurements, make sure it measures perfectly uh, as we want it to in a, in a completely, you know, noiseless uh, environment. And then we take them and we send them to multiple different engineers that work for SVS as well as our customer service team. And they play with them in their personal systems because the real world 
tests. Real world testing is where a lot of that fine tuning comes into play in a sense of like trying to make it sound good from everything from a basement with, you know, um, an open space concept to like a very small bedroom. Like you have to be able to play nice in all those environments. So the final tuning is actually done with uh, three or four of our uh, engineers and, and customer service folks playing in their personal systems to make sure that they, uh, they can have real world performance that people expect from SVS and not so much that clinically perfect uh, performance. So um, it's not like a single person has to sign off on it. It's sort of three or four people all have to hear the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then once all of them are sort of in uh, alignment, then it becomes a, an SVS product for, uh, you know, and signed off for finally. Yeah, nice. Got it. it. Hey, you know what? The thing that you guys do a lot that I I think is great is you always remind people that you guys are doing giveaways, and we're not so good at that. So I know you <laughs> mentioned mentioned at the beginning that you're doing a giveaway. Um, what did you want to give away? Uh, so one of our uh, fastest growing parts of our business is actually our accessories. There are SVS SoundPath accessories, and we have uh, three that we'll be giving away tonight. Um, and the first one uh, I thought we would do is an SVS SoundPath subwoofer isolation system. And uh, for those, oh, there you go, Larry, uh, he's got his little donut right in his hand there. Um, for those who don't know, basically what that does is decouple the subwoofer from the room. And I'll put it out to you guys. Do you guys know what the benefits of decoupling a subwoofer from the room are? Yes. If you're in the second floor, your neighbors downstairs will hate you less? No. That, that is, that, that's no, very that's good. Part it makes of it, you a yeah. better neighbor. Less vibrations in your room. Yep. So basically what you're doing is removing your subwoofer from the room in the sense that the energy that's coming from it is not being transferred into the to floors the floor. and into the walls and into the ceiling. So you get a lot less room rattle. You get a lot less of the like shaking of little knickknacks on the walls. And that energy then is output into the room. So a lot of people um, claim that you can actually turn the output up on your subwoofer, but you'll have less disturbance for roommates, for neighbors, etc. Like you can play it louder and disturb people less. Uh, so I guess if you're a subwoofer fanatic, that's uh, probably the biggest advantage way of to go, having yeah. your subwoofer yeah. decoupled. Um, you know, and then they uh, fit with any brand. It'll fit not just with an SVS subwoofer. There's a couple different thread sizes. Basically remove the stock feet from your subwoofer, add these guys in there. And then, uh, you know, any of that room rattle, any of the windows sort of uh, shaking during those uh, high impact bass scenes, uh, a lot of that will get cleaned up. So you get cleaner, tighter bass, you play it a little bit louder, uh, more of that sort of chest thumping impact without, uh, you know, sacrificing any of the accuracy in, in some of the uh, more articulate parts of bass as well. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, awesome. subwoofer, turntables, uh, anywhere yeah. you need better isolation or even breathing room between components, it's... We don't really, I try not to say just subwoofer isolation because it can be used for anything that you need isolation for, even under tower speakers or bookshelf stands, something like that. Yeah, I, I've been using um, isolation devices for a long time in my studio. I have a dual 12 Marshall tube combo and like the bass frequencies tighten up. The low end guitar frequencies tighten up when you're using that and recording as 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 opposed to just having it on the ground. So I've been I've been a diehard decouple everything from from whatever it's sitting on. Even my KRK monitors here are decoupled from the shelf that that they're sitting on. It is funny because some people love that sort of room shaking effect, but it can be distracting. You know, it can yeah. be a little bit um, it can take away from the experience. And then once you have that taken away, then you're like, wait, no, I do like this better. I like the clean sort of you no know, uh, room effects, artifacts. They're uh, polluting the uh, soundstage. <laughs> polluting you the soundstage. Underneath underneath the, the license plate for some people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, of course. Uh, Optimus, thank you again for the super chat. We will get to that question. Michael has a question like that. So we'll get to your question in a bit. Um, so here's moving on from subwoofers. I have a question about, um, you know, so I've reviewed two of your, your bookshelf speakers, right? So the ultra, the prime and the ultra, is that right? Yep. yep. Um, uh, the prime, I showed you guys how it survived my storage fire. It's up here. Like I'm never going to let those go because they survived this. everything burned. Except these, I don't know how you guys did it. Maybe the gloss, or something. Maybe it was surrounded in the diapers. I have no idea, but they survived and they work. So I'm kind of happy about that. So whatever you guys are doing, awesome. But so I reviewed two of your speakers, and I I'm just kind of curious as to like where do you pick the crossover frequency for these speakers? Because again, we we're saying how you have to choose between low frequency extension and output, right? 
and I had the feeling that when I reviewed them that you purposely tuned them with with it in mind, like, hey, we make subs. Why don't we just allow these to play extremely loud, which other speakers can't do, right? So other speakers sacrifice that by, you know, they're meant maybe for two channel, so they have low frequency extension, but you cross mm -hmm. them over and they can't play as loud. Like they start, you know, start sounding a little harsh or, you know, hard because of the way it's set up. Yeah, on that? I have both sets in my house. Um, right here on top of my arcade again, that's the prime, I can't point, the prime bookshelves uh, connected to the sound base, which is right there too. So that's our two channel, 150 by two, two channel amplifier. And that's what I have there. And in my bedroom, I have the ultra bookshelves connected to an old Denon receiver. And I've got them crossed at 40 hertz in there with no subwoofer and just let it go. Um, so I, I think both of them are very capable of playing with or without a sub, depending on where you want to cry. You want to put them large, put them large. You want to put them small, 40, 60, 80 hertz, have it that as well. But, uh, you know, adding a subwoofer to any system will completely change your sound stage too. Absolutely. So there's not a, a correct yes or no or why answer to that question. So I apologize for that. But uh, Nick may have another spin on it too. Uh, <laughs> But no, I mean, I think with all of our speakers, we're really going for accuracy, neutrality, like sort of let the content stand on its own. And we're not trying to make the speaker do more than it really should. You know, like if it's a bookshelf speaker, it, it probably is not going to hit down to 25 hertz. So like why sacrifice output in the mid and the high range when, you know, to give it more bass when, hey, we have great subwoofers, too. So if you want if you want to get yeah. there, add one and then <laughs> wink, it'll completely wink. open it up in, a, wink, in an awesome wink. way. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that's really um, one of our big philosophies is to make sure that we're never trying to make any of our products do more than they really mm -hmm. should. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. remain faithful to the content, um, you know, not put too much limiting on it where you're getting cut off right in that moment where it's really supposed to, you know, impress you, but also not, you know, chuffing and struggling to hit what they need to hit, um, you know, based on the rated response of what we're putting it at. So um, it's a balance. I mean, you can't do everything with every single yeah. audio. And I think that's why there's so many audio brands out there and why, uh, you know, people value opinions like yours so much because you can't try them all. But uh, it's definitely a, a balance you have to strike. Yeah. Well, I think you guys did a you, – you made the smart play. To me, if you're focused on home theater, you guys make subs, I think you guys made the right choices. That's kind of why I touched on that. I didn't uh, – for the giveaway also, the way we're going to do it is I think what we want to do is make sure to follow SVS – on Instagram and daily hi-fi on Instagram and we'll announce over there the winner we're gonna do a random drawing so it'll all be random what else so you have this the isolation right yep you want to sound do isolation subwoofer isolation system although as Larry mentioned you can use it on turntable speakers whatever uh, we'll also be giving away a pair of our sound path ultra speaker cables um, these are just Ooh, you know those are nice. really great uh, you know high end speakers but not that sort of high end price that scares a lot of people into saying snake oil uh, but you know nice shielding great you know heavy feel to them uh, you know braided uh, jacket oh look at those handsome cables right there look at that uh, fun thing mana plugs or spades or bare wire if you want it uh, so we'll get a couple of pairs of those out to uh, one person and then also our uh, our most popular accessory now our sound path wireless audio adapter uh this works with subwoofers if you want to mm -hmm. reduce the cable clutter long cable runs across the room use it with a subwoofer up to about 50 feet uh also works with like full range power speakers it passes the full range signal so you could use it as like a rear surround wireless adapter as well um larry what am i what am i forgetting here about the wireless audio adapter anything and the the lag is very low there's uh, less than 25 millisecond uh lag response so it's yeah. extremely quick uh you can actually link three wireless products together off of one you just need to get three kits uh you can use it for turntable cd players anything with an odd analog audio connection even headphones so I, my sennheiser wireless headphones uh were sat on by my dogs a couple of years uh last year and busted them and so i couldn't make a decision on headphones yet so i hooked up the wireless audio adapter and just plugged in a set of my wireless headphones or i'm sorry my wired headphones to make them wireless one uh, for a couple nights and that was fantastic um you can use it for a lot of stuff and the, there's really no no quality loss um what there will be is if you have say you're using it for subs and use one that's wired and one that's wireless you'll have to compensate a little bit in your receiver for your time delay, but it's, it's minimal. And if you aren't uh, really sitting there 
paying attention to it, you'd probably never notice it. Yep. So here's a question that came up earlier from Randall. Does SVS plan on releasing a newer updated version of that? Well, Randall, if you've tuned into our virtual audio file happy hours, we know we don't disclose product <laughs> announcements, but you're not wrong. I'm going to say that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Oh. Good deal. So, hey, hey, could you here to be something else? Could you ostensibly use those for like uh, running a wireless surrounds or something? Yeah. So if you if you want a, a way that I've helped some people do stuff in their home, so you guys are familiar with our prime wireless speakers, the powered bookshelves that we have. Uh, they're a 200 watt stereo powered pair bookshelf, or our prime. Uh, I'm sorry, or our prime wireless sound base. You could use if you have a receiver with pre outs, and this is where it gets a little geeky. You mm -hmm. need to have a receiver with pre outs for rear left and right. You can hook up the transmitter to the rear left and right via an RCA cable mm -hmm. and then get the receiver end and plug it into the back of some powered speakers or a two channel gotcha. amp that you have in the back of the room. And there you have rear wireless surround. You just got to play with the volume a little bit on whatever it's connected to and then run your room calibration and stuff. But it works fantastic. Um, I actually did a video with uh, somebody earlier this year on how to set that up. Um, so it's uh, it's cool. really cool when you can do that. Yeah, that's awesome. People always talk about that. They're like, is there any wireless speaker system? Because I don't want to run speaker wire around my room. Yep. So yep. it's a good option. Yeah, so yep. giving away three things. Make sure to follow uh, on Instagram. That's where we're going to do the giveaway. So uh, you also had uh, another thing that you're doing with audio advice, no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is our big, uh, big giveaway that we have going on now. Uh, Audio Advice actually just recently launched something on their site. They're a, uh, a retailer slash dealer down in the North Carolina area. Uh, and they have this system builder that they've built, which is really a cool sort of way for you to customize your own personal system. Everything from the AV receiver to all sorts of surround channels, subwoofers, etc. And uh, as part of, uh, you know, promoting that and getting it out there in the world, and just to be clear, they sell all over the country. It's not just North Carolina. You can you can buy direct from them. Um, but the, we're doing a giveaway in conjunction with them. Uh, that in, that's basically about a three thousand dollars system uh, that includes the Prime Pinnacle Tower speakers, the uh, SB two thousand Pro subwoofer, Prime Center Channel, a couple Prime Satellite speakers. Um, so really a blockbuster giveaway that they're using to help promote this uh, system builder. You got to go on there. You try the system builder. You, you give it a trial. You save it, and I, I believe that's it. You're entered. Um, it's one of the biggest giveaways we've ever done. They're super excited about this tool. And, uh, you know, frankly, we want to support them. They're a great partner of ours. So that's why we uh, decided to do this with them. But uh, again, I think this is a, just a fun, interactive way that, uh, you know, a, a specific dealer is just getting people interested in this hobby. You know, you can play around with it, tweak it, have a, an interactive experience building a system. And, uh, you know, kudos to them for thinking creatively because I, I hope there's a lot more of this now as people are, are stuck at home. They don't have the opportunity to go to these showrooms. And, uh, you know, I just think it's a cool sort of uh, opportunity for people to, to play around and see what's possible. It is. Yeah. It's one of the coolest things. If you guys like geeking out and designing a room, and I, I'm guessing, uh, Michael, you've got control of that right now. I am, man. This is my theater room right here, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm, it's, it's just so, so cool. cool. And Check so they have out. everything, audio, wild. video. Oh, I'll talk to those guys. There, guys. Oh, hey, look at that. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. Winner to win right there. Winner to win. Um, you, but I've <laughs> talked to those guys, and you know, I've watched the video on how this configurator works, and it's pretty crazy. That's like, pretty wild. It gets into I like all it. kinds of stuff. Like if you have multiple levels, like how far your seat should be from the one in front of you. And so it's no joke. It tells you where to put the speakers. And the other thing that they really try to push uh, on audio devices that – they want you to be able to call them. So you can call them and get advice. Like you can say, Hey, what do I do here? And they'll, they have somebody who knows what they're talking about and they'll be able to help you out. So that's pretty sick. Very cool. Though. I like that. Yeah, that's awesome giveaway. Awesome. And so then you put in your name, you know, youth man's theater, mm -hmm. email that, and then they'll get, give you a call back. I like it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a, a great sort of innovative new way to, to just get people interested. And I do have to plug our own site. We have a system builder as well. It is not quite at that level. That's like our system builder on steroids, the one that they've developed. Uh, but I will say, if you buy four of my four, five or more products from ours, you do get a 5% discount. So if you're on our site and you want to check ours out, uh, by all means, give it a whirl. It's uh, in the little tools section there at the top. Um, you know, something else that you can uh, you can check out the system builder on our site as well. Um, but I will give props to Audio Advice, man. They put a lot of investment into that, and it's a phenomenal tool. So I, I wish them the best of luck, and I think this giveaway will help uh, a lot more people realize that it's out there. 
you mm-hmm. know, a lot of times we we get affiliate uh, commission from selling products that we reviewed if they buy it on Amazon. And a lot, I know you have products on Amazon and you also have products on your website. And so a lot of times, most of the time, I tell people go to the SVS's website because you have certain things there that make it enticing, you know, that, that's beneficial to the end, uh, end user, user, in my yep. opinion. In my opinion, I just see like, okay, you have, uh, you know, trade up programs and like, diff- you know, the, um, the in-home trial is, is in-home huge. trial, you know, uh, shipping I mean, these I, things are, is not cheap. I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's awesome. Like people will ask me, Hey, you know, should I get two of these, uh, PB 2000s or one PB 4000? Like, honestly, I mean, either way you go, you'll probably be fine. But if you're looking for the best way to do it, buy them direct from SVS and try them out for, what is it, 45 days? 45 days, yeah. And see which which setup you like you know, the best and then go from there. And yeah. when you realize how hard it is and how much of a pain it is to pack it up, you'll just be like, nah, I'll just keep them both. <laughs> I think, yeah, right? I think that's, I'll just, I think I'll that's what three subwoofers. That's what, it's, that's what happens. Trojan right? horse. Trojan horse. No, I mean, sure. we're... Uh, the diplomatic answer is whether you buy from one of our uh, esteemed dealers who are all phenomenal or from the SVS site, you know, we try to take care of you. And a lot of the, uh, you know, what you guys were talking about, uh, the official names are SVS customer bill of rights. We try to apply that to anyone who buys from SVS. We'll take care of you um, no matter where you buy it from, as long as it's an authorized retailer. So, um, but we appreciate you guys throwing that out there. It means a lot to us and, and we stand behind our stuff. So that's all part yeah. of it. Yeah, just buy it from SVS's website and use my affiliate. That's it. <laughs> no Let's argument. be honest. Come on now. No <laughs> argument around here. Um, so um, that leads to uh, Michael. You have a question, right? Yeah, somebody kind of alluded to it. You know, of course, you know, I've always loved big subwoofers. Um, I love good, solid, deep bass. Um, SVS makes the PB16s phenomenal subwoofer. Um, but one of the questions comes from Optimus Vader, and he says, you know, um, is there any plans to do a larger subwoofer than a 15, maybe an 18? I know a lot of companies are starting now to even go crazy with the 21s and 24s and even dual subwoofers. We see that with um, Monoprice came out with their dual 15. Um, you know, of course, you've got the the higher end boutique kind of PSA, um, JTR. You know, they're rocking, um, you know, massive subwoofers. But can we get a little hint on... Is there any plans for maybe an, an 18 from SVS or a dual 15? So, you know, inquiring you, minds want to know. Michael, you have to just go, like, they can't say anything, but just you have to, like, judge based on their face and then figure out what the answer is. Well, I mean, is. Nick's smiling from ear to ear. So, I mean, that's I'm, I'm very used to this me. question. I'm very yeah. used to this question yeah. because anytime we're, like, even uh, hinting at a product announcement, it's like, oh, it's finally the SVS 32 inch. <laughs> and I will say, um, <laughs> the 16 Ultras are going to remain our flagship reference subwoofers for the foreseeable future. Okay. So that is uh, that is a fact. But, you know, our vision for uh, for subwoofers right now is really to try to get as many people interested in upgrading uh, the base experience they have at home. And uh, so I think, you know, where you're going to see us play at least for uh, the next, uh, you know, amount of, I don't want to give any timelines, the next uh, while is, uh, you know, products that are going to embrace, get more people to embrace home yeah. theater base, uh, more people to have that spousal acceptance factor, products that they can bring into their home that are realistic. Um, and, you know, on top, you know, I will also say we'll never say never. We yeah. know where we cut our teeth. We know where uh, a lot of passionate base heads want us to go. So we certainly hear what they're asking, but we want to bring this to as many people as possible. Sure. So at this point, a 32-inch subwoofer for a, even a 24 is probably yeah. not that space. Um, and Larry, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you heard some secrets I haven't, but that's kind of where uh, where I'm going to take it for this point. I don't know, man. Uh, I've been trying to convince Smith, let's do like a whole room sub. So uh, mm-hmm. I, Ooh, I, I, I tell him I want a big old huge cylinder, but I don't think most of us could put a, uh, a water heater in a room with the movie theater. So yep. uh, I think that's where you start to struggle is when you get too big. Yeah. And, the, and the one spoiler. Oh, go ahead, Michael. No, go ahead. You're fine. Uh, one spoiler I will give is, uh, I mean, I, I think we've said it before. We are developing a, an architectural subwoofer, an in-wall subwoofer. Cool. Uh, obviously, a lot of our uh, dealers, you know, who have brought SVS on, uh, right. they work in custom space. And having a uh, completely invisible subwoofer that lives in the wall, mm-hmm. uh, but that is deserving of the SVS name is very appealing. So, you know, we're, we're certainly going to be uh, working on that for the early part of 2021. I think you'll see that launch. 
Um, you know, and again, that's not going to be necessarily a DIY outfit, but yeah. uh, it's something else that allows more people to embrace the kind of uh, bass and low frequencies that I think all of us love here. Uh, and that's a big goal of us to, to just get people thinking that way. So, Nick, are we looking at maybe like a, is it a 10 inch or are you able to say what size you're looking at or do you have different sizes? Yeah, it's going to be very similar to our, it's going to be very similar with respect to our 3000 series. So, a 12 okay. inch driver, awesome. uh, about a thousand watts. Um, Man. You know, I, I don't have the full specs, yeah, but, uh, but that's you know, cool. it's going to be in that realm. That's sort of not our highest, but not yeah, our yeah. lowest, but still a, a phenomenal experience. I think that's incredible to have a 12 inch in the wall. I mean, of course, I love just regular standalone subwoofers, but not everybody can can have that. Not everybody's right. wife is not going to want that. So I'd rather have well, an in-wall gonna... sub. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather have an in-wall subwoofer than no subwoofer. You know what I mean? So that's pretty rad, man. Do you guys do any now, would that be in... setups? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Would, I that be in, would that be like enclosed or like have its own yeah. little cabinet? Yeah. And th or is there's it an infinite baffle that, kind of thing? If Gary was here, I think he'd probably say quite a bit more. But Okay, uh, awesome. Um, yeah, you know, it'll have its own back box. It'll have its own enclosure. I mean, it has to in order to achieve the kind of accuracy and transient speed and all the, you know, the other factors that we uh, we pride mm -hmm. ourselves on. So it'll oh. be a complete enclosure that, uh, you know, is really easy to spec in the wall. That's part of it, too. You know, much like the elevation, we want to make it super easy to install. And a lot of these in-wall subwoofers, they don't even match the stud size right. of, uh, you know, a typical oh, house. Oh, yeah. Build. Yeah, and that's a real problem. You know, mm -hmm. who wants to cut into the beams to like put a subwoofer in? No, you want to just lay it in there, yeah. whether it's a new build or retrofit. So, um, we're gonna try to get it right and make it easy to install, but still give that SVS experience. And uh, you know, so far the uh, you know original and uh, initial designs look really promising. Nice. All right, sounds great. Good job, guys. Cool. I think one here, thing. Here, with... Here's a question. Then here's a kind of a question. So like. Uh, do you guys ever have like some crazy builds that you do that are not really meant to go out? It's just you guys playing around maybe with some extra subs that are just like, I don't know what we're going to do with these and like do something ridiculous there. So uh, last Halloween, we made uh, speakers out of pumpkins. We put drivers inside pumpkins and made some speakers there. That probably is not what you're asking me to do. Um, now, I mean, we try to focus our efforts on real products. We do okay. have fun with some prototypes and just destroy them by uh, playing them at you know, <laughs> levels that uh, no subwoofer should uh, be exposed to. Uh, but in general, you know, we're not doing those sort of like, you know, just fun projects to uh, to impress ourselves. We, we try to keep it uh, grounded in the real world, stuff that uh, may make it to market someday. Yeah, so you're focused on actually doing stuff. They're not playing around over there at SVS, huh? No, I mean, we're, you know, we have fun, but we're, uh, you know, we, we run lean and mean, you know, we want to keep our prices low for people. So we're not trying to, you know, do things that, uh, like, I, that's part of the reason, you know, our ultra towers, the $2,000 and we've had a lot of people, why don't you make like a $10,000 pair of flagship speakers to show just pushing the limits. And we're like, we could, but we're going to invest so much to get there and sell, you know, how many, no, who, who knows how many pairs, um, it's not feasible. It doesn't help us achieve what we want to achieve. So, um, you know, we're, we're good you know, sticking where we play strong and, uh, and having fun. Yeah. Now I get that. You don't mess around when it comes to time. Time is very valuable. And Nick always hangs up on me first whenever we're on the phone. <laughs> You're not the only one. Too. Is that yeah. right? It, it's Nick, man. He's right, quick at the end. Dang, he got you know me. what it is? I, I got this uh, condition where like, I hate the lingering goodbyes where it's like, no, you say goodbye. No, you say goodbye. And it's like, I just like make it easy on you. So exactly. to me, it's, I'm doing you a favor. I don't want to be like stuck there being like, oh, no, oh that's cool. You know, so, <laughs> he's a sorry. savage with it. I'm going to get you next time though. Get you hang up. So, uh, <laughs> I'll get you next time. Let's see here. I guess we can, we can take calls. Whoever wants to call in talk to these guys. He'll hang up on you. I'll try to hang up on you first, too. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't have the figure uh, on my white Let's see here. Are we set up? I don't. We tried this once last time, right? With our new setup. Let's yeah. See. Yeah. You want me to test work? Let me call him. Are you going yeah, screen? Let me here, let me, I'm going to have to change this, too. So while you're doing that, we've got a question over here from Bad to the Bone. He says if he's going to run at least four subs, um, is there a big difference between the Pro 2000 and 3000? If he's running four of them, could he get away with the 2000s? I think is his question. I, I, now, I guess it depends. Is he trying to blend them or is he trying to figure out what you get better out? I mean, obviously the 3000s are going to give you significantly more output and yeah. deeper uh, low frequency extension. Um, 
So I, the short answer is yes, I'd say there's a pretty big difference. Uh, but if you're running four in like a medium to small size room, you may not notice it as much. If it's a big room, you definitely notice it. I haven't reviewed the 2000, but I can tell you the 3000 definitely put a smile on my face. I just had one of them. So it was pretty, pretty so ball. 3000 series is my favorite product on our, our subwoofer lineup. But the, uh, the 2000 Pro, uh, I mean, if you look at the difference in cost, too, between what four of each would cost, there's room for more audio equipment in there as well. So uh, there that's is. always a good thing. Yeah. Call, caller, can you hear us? Hello? Yeah. Can you guys hear them? Hey. Kind of. All right. Uh, well, um, yeah, I just want to ask a quick question about any plan to make like a dual if oh, oh if you can make a dual slow what the set for for less less than a thousand dollars and you make a dual subwoofer set for less than like a thousand like a dual driver like dual opposing drivers oh, driver, yes uh-huh yes uh again i'll i'll use my uh, old fallback of we'll never say never but uh you know if you're looking for that about a thousand dollar range i think um you know, maybe you'll well, see. I can't. I just can't. Thousands and stack them on top of each other. There it is. Yeah. That's the answer. Oh, okay. yeah. the, the short answer is yes. We've definitely looked at. I mean, we've had dry, uh, subwoofers that have had two drivers in them before, and we will have them again. Uh, the timeline, I don't know at this point, um, but we have a lot of projects that are uh, being worked on, and uh, you know, a dual opposing subwoofer may be one of those. Wink, wink. You yeah. heard it here first. Yeah, that sounds very official. That name. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Sure. Hopefully, that answers the question. It's the opposite of official. Yeah, that's what I'm I appreciate y'all and keep up the good work. Thanks, 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 Thanks very so much. much. All, right. All right. That's my first Ooh. ever. Call. I got him. Yeah. Now, <laughs> hang up game is on point. Now, Larry needs a question, so some of you guys call in and ask the Larry. <laughs> thank you. I didn't get his name, by the way, but thanks for calling again. Did you call in, man? Great question. Yeah, isn't that fun? You guys should take in calls. It's yeah, not or, scary. or like, um, you know, could you even just make some sort of uh, stackable bracket, you know, and then just have that as an option? Oh, you man. can stack our subs. The cabinets are strong yeah. enough. You can just put them on top of each other. And you don't with even need with the or without the feet? Like Either. Remove the feet for the yeah, top without one? them even. Yeah, okay. we've had people do that. Smaller rooms, they've got two stacked on each side and, you know, have it at it. it. Yeah. All right, we've got another call. Rubber feet. So on the feet. air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your question? Oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes. you're good. Loud and clear. It's the legendary brown note. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Uh, what's nice. up, man? And a uh, question for uh, Nick and Larry. Uh, so I've noticed that you guys have like weird driver sizes, 13, 13 and a half, 16. My question was, what's up with that? Did Gary just throw some, throw a bunch of numbers on the wall and whatever stuck? Was the driver sizes or what's the reasoning? That's fine. We just discussed this this past week on our live broadcast. So, uh, Nick, I'm going to let you take this one because uh, you and Gary have a really good answer to this one. No, I mean, it's um, it's really about finding that balance. Again, you're always looking for, you know, the tractor pull mentality with subwoofers, that massive output and low frequency extension. Like, that's the most important thing. But without sacrificing accuracy, without sacrificing that, you know, stopping a dime transient speed. And, you know, we found a 13 inch driver a 13 and a half inch driver, I should say, and a 16 inch driver give you that perfect balance of being able to move massive amounts of air, but still have pinpoint control. And then when you marry that with things like a, an eight inch voice coil or the edge wound split wind voice coil, like we have on our 16 ultras and 3000 series, like we found that does more to get you to that sort of perfect balance of output extension and control uh, versus, you know, the more traditional 18 and whatnot. So, um, you know, it, it does feel like, you know, SBS is just sort of trying to be a little bit different. And, uh, you know, certainly that's not lost on us, it, but it, it's also there's science there too. You know, our engineers have found that the 13 and a half and the 16 inch drivers just work better for us to achieve the kind of flat frequency response we want and the, the levels of uh, extension and output. Um, and so that's where we're at. So I, I hope that answers your question, but, uh, it's not just pulled out of a hat. I promise you that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. That's all Love you got, show, Legendary Brown. I thought you were going to hit him hard. What's up? Well, I actually <laughs> saw his My question. Well, no, I just that's, couldn't that's put it on screen. You guys are awesome. Thank all you. All right. Well, good having you, bro. Talk to you soon. Yep. Thanks for calling, bud. Have a good one.
All right, bye. Thanks. Oh, he got me. I think he got me this time. He hung up on me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man. So it's fun. It's fun. Kanga, he says, uh, would would it make any sense to daisy chain stack subs on either side? You totally could. I, if you guys haven't really seen the back of our subs, they all have input and output. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our products, uh, anything 3000 series and below has RCA input and output. So you can daisy chain or you can run left and right stereo to get more sensitivity out of the amplifier. And if you do the 4000 or 16 Ultra, they have XLR ins and outs. So I'm, I'm on it, guys. Two. I'm on it. Here we go. Boom. Whoa, there you go. Yeah. So you and we have a lot of caller, by the way, too. Caller, when? Hello? Yeah. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your question? Uh, my name is Kevin Caller. I'm calling from Kennedy, New York. All right. And, yeah. I've been wanting you guys to come up to Albany, New York, so I can get some demonstrations. So. Your uh, your equipment. I got the uh, Ultra Center, and uh, and I'm loving it. Just to look at, it, I just stare at. It. But my, <laughs> I mean, I've got I've got like two questions. One is, uh, I'd like to purchase the uh, the uh, SoundPath wireless uh, to, for my for a sub, so I can do two subs. But I only have one pre out. So how would how would I do that? Would I do that with a Y coming out of the pre out? Hello? Yeah, so he wants to set up uh, uh, two subs, but he only has one pre out. Would he use a Y adapter? But he wants to use Absolutely. the Y. Yeah, the Y adapter would be the best way to go because there'd be uh, same signal going each direction. Uh, we, that's what we recommend to a lot of people. It's an accessory. It's available on our site too as a Y adapter. Um, if you come directly out of the receiver and Y split it, then it's the same signal going to either way. Um, if I think I heard a question about the wireless adapter in there too. Yeah. Uh, if he's using the wireless adapter, what he could do is just run a single output um, to the one wireless transmitter and then get a second kit. And you can pair up to three of our wireless receiver transmitter kits together. Gotcha. So you technically could run three subwoofers off of one output and they'd all sync up together um so you wouldn't necessarily well, then, have to do no, like, my question was could i use that wireless uh from the from my pre-out and go take the, a y connector from there instead of doing it uh, the way you just suggested absolutely but if you if you run say like if you're going from a pre-out maybe into a another amplifier and you run one signal that's wireless and one that's wired, you will run into a little bit of delay um, just between uh -oh. the two signals. But, um, but the best way to do it is do both wireless um, or even daisy chain uh, from one sub to the other if you're trying to run two. Uh, daisy chain, that, that, would, that doesn't, I, I don't know if that would make any sense if I put one sub in the front other room and one sub in the back. Oh, yeah, no. So I run out. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. But you, yeah. you can adjust the delay, right. though, to sync them up, though, can you not? Uh, not with the single output. You'd have some issues. Oh, okay. there. Um, but if you happen oh, to I'd have, have, I'd have to get another uh, uh, amplifier and, and run it off of that. Or just use two of the adapters, right? Yeah, um, run them both wireless would... Uh, would assist there, but also if you're happening to be running two SVS subwoofers with the subwoofer control app, you can get in there and dial it down um, and make some adjustments. It would get them pretty close. But if one is wired and one is wireless, they, there will be um, a slight delay between the two. Okay. Yeah. Well, I haven't got my three thousand yet, but I'm going to. Pl I'm planning on ordering it. Great. Right. Thank you. One, Thank you for one more uh, question. Oh yeah, yeah. One more question. Yeah. On, on yeah sure. The the uh, center. What what is your best, uh, in your opinion? What is your best crossover on that? Whew. Well, that's going to depend on a lot of factors. Your front stage, uh, what you're running. We if you're doing our ultra center, um, I will put it somewhere typically between sixty to eighty, uh, depending on the receiver brand I'm playing with. Um, but if I'm running separates. Um, you know, you can play with it a little bit more that way too. But 
Uh, if I'm just running, say, off like a Denon receiver that we do at all of our events, I, I run all of our speakers at small, regardless of which speaker it is, and I cross all of them between uh, 60 to 80 hertz. And, oh, so I should just experiment between 60 and 80. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. And it depends on your all room. Right. Uh, the the old the ultra center I'll go down to 60 on. You can go down lower if you want, but I tend to like it around 60 hertz. And then the prime, I pretty much always do at 80. Okay, 60 sounds good. There you go. Well, I think thank you very much, guys. Uh, Great questions. Go, Thanks. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Yes, thank yes, you for being I'm an ultra here. center owner. Over in New York. Yeah, right. and Kevin, we'll when you want to order that SV3000, you remember, <laughs> use, use Joe's link. link. <laughs> <laughs> think, you say that again? Oh, we're just joking. They're saying use a affiliate link. But uh, thank, thank you for calling in. Hopefully that helps out. Yep. Take care. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See, it's fun, right? Taking the yeah, calls is fun. Calls. Not bad. I'll All tell right, you guys how to do it. And... Got some more questions over here for you guys if you're ready for it. So can you use the ultra center speaker as a left and right? I think we saw that in one of those previous um, home Photo. theater uh, photos that we had. And then do you recommend them in that format? You you could. Um, I think talking with a lot of people, it's it's really going to come down to when you, when you use the center channel as a speaker that it's not intended for, you've got to also find a way to support it, stand it upright, get the furniture for as well so uh, i tend to look at either a bookshelf which is going to be in the same case or the cost of two ultra centers do a pair of prime pinnacle because mm. they're going to be up about mm. the same space. yeah um, yeah you got to put the bookshelf on a stand anyway yeah. right there yep. you go we got another caller what's caller. your name where are you calling from what's your question i'm calling from right outside philadelphia pennsylvania this is tristan jones oh tristan. no tristan. what's up brother hey. what's up First time caller, so be be kind. Be be. be, be. <laughs> we're, we're here. We got you. Bring the fire. Well, I got a, I got a, I got a really, I got a really serious question for the SCI folks. Um, when, when you know, youth man, you know, when he went away from SBS subwoofers and went to JTR, whose job was it to console Gary at SBS? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Oh, man. Michael bought those, so uh, uh, I, who's, who's feeling bad about that? He bought them. He can do whatever he wants with them. Replace yeah. them, keep them. So there was no consoling. You know what? We're all about, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, and whatever people want, they can enjoy. And uh, if it's an SVS, great. If it's a JTR, great. If it's, uh, you know, something out of a box from Walmart, eh, maybe not so great. Nah, but we're not either going way, there. like, you know, <laughs> there was uh, there were some tears on my end, but uh, I think as a whole, like, you know, Michael's just a great resource for the industry, and as all these guys are. So um, uh, that's me they playing are. nice. But I, I did cry myself <laughs> to sleep that night when I found out. I <laughs> Tears were I'm, shed. I'm Tears sure were Michael shed. cried as well. I mean, <laughs> you know, he's a good guy. I'm sure he cried even even through the joy of the new JTR speaker. I mean, so. <laughs> he said plenty of nice things about SVS, so I, yeah. I can't hold any ill will towards yeah. anyone about uh, you know about that kind of thing. So uh, you know. More power to him and more base to him. He wants. Yes. <laughs> you can't. You can't recommend the the four eighteens to just add anybody. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just kind mm -hmm. of rough. That's kind of a rough one to recommend. Yeah. That, that's a hard sell on the wife of acceptance factor there for most guys. So definitely much more of a high wife acceptance factor on the SCS stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Awesome, man. Tristan, good hearing from you, man. Crazy setup too. He just he made a video. You got a pretty crazy setup over there. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Very kind. And honestly, the yes, yes, sub, I mean, it's the thing that changed everything the most. I mean, I put a comment out for you. Obviously, you guys have tons of comments. But, I mean, I was considering changing out my left, center, and right three years ago before I got my PV-16 Ultra. And honestly, mm -hmm. I haven't looked back yet. Like, nice. I haven't even thought about changing those in three years because of the major difference having such an amazing subwoofer. It just changes everything like you guys were talking about earlier in the night. Awesome. Yeah, it did right there. Change your world, yeah. <laughs> Ike, Tristan, <laughs> Ike says you're about to get banned from the show. <laughs> oh man. Right. You guys have a good night. Hey, hey man, thanks so much. Thanks for hearing from you. Finally, you call us anytime.
<laughs> Thanks, Tristan. <laughs> Troll Michael anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Tristan, yeah, we got a good, good group of people here. Yeah. A lot of SVS fans. So I thought it was kind of cool to hear from them. You know, I know you guys get a lot of feedback of people say, hey, I love my SVS, but it's kind of cool to hear them, you know, actually tell you that. Yeah. So there you have it. I think I'm going to, I'm going to, turn this off because this is just going to keep ringing like crazy so if you didn't make it for the phone call again uh you guys have some giveaways we're going to be doing those on instagram so make sure to follow um let's see whoever who here doesn't have an instagram account go make an instagram account that's right it's worth it man it's worth it. yeah man Come and on. they're always putting out just incredible content man you guys are killing it in social media and you know, we always try to encourage all manufacturers, man, be involved with your stinking community, you know, and you guys are definitely doing like you're leading it. Um, you and maybe a few other brands, literally. And that's about it. Everybody else is going, what are we supposed to be doing again? Well, and you guys are paving the way. So, man, my my hat's off to you because, you know, you're engaged with your community. You're answering those questions in the comments. You're um you know, now you're live streaming pretty much every single week and you're just killing it, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we appreciate yeah. that. There was, no. there was sort of a, uh, I mean, I think there was a, a long period of time where, you know, hi-fi and, and high performance home theater, it just wasn't cool. It was sort right. of this hobby that was like limited to the top, you know, 0.1% mm -hmm. of humanity. It was way there too expensive. Go. And then everyone was, yeah, there you go. Everyone was sort of uh, looking at it like you, you go into the forums, you get yelled at because you said, I'm thinking of this brand. And it's like, no, nah, that sucks. You suck. You're stupid. Like, don't ever buy that. Wow. And so, you know, I just feel like that the fun that that, you know, had, had been leached out for uh, for a while. And I think now with the, the virtual world we're living in with YouTube, with uh, social media, yeah. like that's coming back to it. And, you know, the the idea of being an audiophile or appreciating great sound, um, dare I say, it's kind of cool again. And I hope that continues. Um, now I think there's still a learning curve. People still think it's more like technical than it really is. Like you need mm -hmm. to have this degree and, you know, wiring and whatever to be able to get it all set up. So I think that's where, you know, what you guys are doing is so important. But uh, yeah, we try to make it simple, fun, and, and just get people uh, excited, you know, passionate about audio. It's it's you know, it's, it's more than 50% of the experience. Video is great, but like, yeah. well, what is it without great sound? Yeah. Uh, yeah Optimus. So that was Optimus, right? That was Sana? Optimus Vader, yeah. Optimus yeah. Vader. He says he doesn't have an Instagram account. So <clears> we're cool with it. Come on, Optimus. Come on, bro. It's not like I'm yeah, asking you to make a TikTok or something. Come on. Yeah, dude. It's just That's Instagram. Yeah, find although, a friend and tell although them Optimus, you. you should probably try and get some TikTok with your, you know, <laughs> oh, he would kill it. Moves, you'd kill it, bro. He'd be TikTok but, but famous in like two Vader. weeks. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you totally will with the PB two thousand yeah. pros. He's been um, getting his theater together. Yeah, he recently came over. He's local to me over in Orlando, in, or I say Orlando, Orlando area, Kissimmee, and uh, he recently came over. and We got to hang out for several hours, man. Super cool, good dude, man. What was Definitely the look on his face it. when he heard your subs? Uh, it wasn't his face. His whole body changed. You know? <laughs> 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 you clean your seats afterwards? Can yeah, I, I, think his in, I think his internal organs got rearranged. But, you know, other than that, it was all good. Nice. Oh, man. Yeah, we got the best people up in here. We what do, are, man. What are the it's comments we have before here. we go? Because we're, we're, we're winding down now. So. Um, Random question: Will SBS make a sound bar that just came in from hmm, Andrew? Yeah, ah, you guys with the, the future teasers, you're killing me here. How many times I can be broken record? You know what? It's another one of those things where if uh, we think we can do it better <laughs> than anyone else, we think we can make a product that's you know best bang for the buck out there. We're going to do it. Nice. Um, so certainly, the popularity of sound bars is not lost on SBS. And so to say that you know, ah, oh, screw sound bars, like that's not real audio. I'd be short sighted as an audio brand if we think we can make the best one. So sure. uh, there is my again tap dancing answer. <laughs> you know what? I wish I wish uh, honestly I wish company would be like less hush 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 about stuff because it's not like you're it's not like a secret. You know what I mean? Like a sound it is, though, not like it's a brand new product that nobody's ever we look heard at of. It, you know, you can hurt know. sales of existing products. You know, if I'm gonna put my business hat on, like if I'm Got if it. I'm coming out here saying we're gonna you know remake this series or that series, you're not gonna buy the existing one. You know, so like from our perspective, um, you got to kind of think about it that way. And, you know, I love the idea of teasing a product when, you know, you're a yeah. couple weeks away. Right. But when you're maybe not that close and, you know, it could potentially yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to wait. Like, why buy it now? I'm going to wait no, for that next you. greatest thing. Um, and, you know, if, if I can, you know, go a little bit further, I think SVS, we're not going to do 
10 product launches a year. We're going to do three or four and we're going to make the best products we can of those three or four product launches. And that's kind of been our mentality for uh, rolling out new gear and kind of how it's going to stay. So, uh, you know, that's why we keep it a secret. We want it to be a surprise. We want people to be like, oh, they did it again. And, and hopefully that's the reaction. Yeah, so basically, it's kind of like Mac products. You know, you got they have a like a they have websites where they track the, the schedule. Like they never tell you when the new stuff, but they're like, hey, this one hasn't been updated in about three years. So don't yeah. buy this because they're probably yeah. going to update it soon. Dude, and it's nuts. <laughs> what they do is they go and they see what patents Apple has applied for. And they're like, oh, look, they're applying for this patent, which means yeah. a new, you know, whatever Apple watch is going to be X, Y, Z or have, you know, ABC. It's crazy. So somebody yeah, create I'm that like website. Like somebody track to see when the last time they refreshed a product line. And it's probably due soon. Somebody I, make that site. It'll be popular. One last thing I want to say before you guys go is, you know, the thing I hear a lot of times, there's there's uh, Optimus Vader. One thing I want to say is uh, a lot of times I see comments where maybe people have, you know, went from an SVS product to something bigger, right? That's why they keep asking you for something else because they – but um, one thing that I've never heard anybody say is that SVS doesn't have good customer support. Yeah. You know, never heard that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They could have an issue with a product, right? Oh, something. Okay, but they took care of it. And I think that's one of the huge you know, things. And I think you guys there's a, every single brand is like, oh, we have great customer service. To say, right, who's going to say we have sh crappy customer service? Nobody's going to say that. But, you know, where us coming from the internet direct world, like that's where we started. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't have the luxury of relying on dealers to sort of provide that after support. We had to bake it into our company DNA mm -hmm. to be able to have what we call our SVS sound experts there every step of the way like you just got a 200 pound subwoofer for delivery to your house and you have no idea what you're going to do next <laughs> now it's like you know all right here's who you need to call here's who you need to chat with you want to go email whatever it is there's you know multiple ways social that you can reach us and we'll walk you through that whole process and that you know that extends before you buy the product while you own it and even after you know you're uh, thinking about upgrading so um you know it's it's truly important to us we have a, a very well trained uh staff they're not about you know, cranking people in and out, trying to get you off the phone as quick as possible. It's about getting you the best advice. Um, you know, and then we have our customer bill of rights, which you're showing on screen there, which is more about our consumer policies, how we take care of people. Uh, but you'll never call SBS or chat with us and feel rushed. You know, yeah. that's important. You invested in us. We're going to invest to make sure you get the best experience possible. Um, and, and, you know, there, there's nothing more important to us than, uh, than making sure that you have that support after the fact. Nick, I think one other thing that that I have seen on my personal channel that a lot of guys comment on is they'll call you thinking they want X subwoofer. Let's just say it's the PB4000 and they'll talk to one of your reps. And after hearing their setup and hearing what they, you know, their dimensions of the room, SVS might tell them you really don't need the 4000. You know, we recommend up 3000, you know, or two of our PB2000 or something like that. And so. I definitely appreciate that because it's not just about a dollar. It's about taking care of this customer and meeting their needs with what they have going on in their room. Yeah. And this, this is not meant as a criticism, but there are some audio fans out there who have more money than sense. And they're like the PB 16, I seen it. Right. Youth man has it. I need it for my 12 by 12 room. And you're like, yeah. all right, dude, like it's 12 by 12. You realize how big this thing is and how much overkill, how much extra headroom you're never going to use. <laughs> and it's like you get them talking and it's like, oh, oh, oh. And then you finally get them to realize that, like, it's not actually good for the whole entire soundstage to get a sub that big. So, yeah, um, yeah that's part of it. You know, you, you talk people down to what's right for them as opposed to, like, just trying to get the biggest sale. Yeah. And that's yeah. all. Now, now, if you guys are wondering where you can go to experience some awesome subwoofer workout, you can always tune into my live DJ stream saturdays 2 p.m pacific standard time i've actually renamed it to subwoofer workout saturday Ooh. and uh play a lot of great house and techno that really everybody just was just they're just like well even hi-fi haven he's like he's like he said he's 60 years old or something like that he's like this music is amazing it's shaking my house it's it's fantastic so awesome. if you guys are you know watched all the movies you can and want to hear some brand new music tune in saturdays 2 p.m pacific standard time techno dead slash live <laughs> Yes, yep. party at home. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's yep. Right. And then and and the last thing is I know you guys also have a playlist. Oh SBS yeah, that's right. Playlist, right? A few out there, yeah. Where do we, we get that? A few. 
Uh, so we have an SVS Spotify channel. Um, we have a couple playlists. We have one that's just sort of uh, best demo music that uh, people who tuned into our uh, audio file happy hour suggested. And then Larry, why don't you tease the one that you uh, created on the last broadcast there? Two uh, broadcasts ago. It was like, what? what is it you hear and you immediately crank it to 11? And that's what our latest playlist is. It is the stuff that, and it's not stuff we created. It was user created. It was feedback from people watching our live broadcast. Like, what is it that you listen to that the second you hear it, you crank your system? And so there's the crank it to 11 system. There's some of our recommended demos that we do at our events. There's all kinds of stuff in there that you guys can access. Yeah. And then we have a couple bass friendly playlists broken down by genre, um, different musical genres. So we're, we're just starting to get onto the whole playlist thing. Um, but it's fun. It's a cool way to crowdsource content. And, uh, you know, again, it gets our community involved. So that's why we love it. As long as bass mechanics in there somewhere. So oh, there's bass <laughs> mechanics be and there. helmet and Jimi Hendrix and Depeche Mode. Like I was impressed. Mm -hmm. There was some good variety there. Yes. Chana, you want to take us out? You guys have anything else? that you want to plug before we go? Cause we're at a, an hour 35. We can go yeah, on for hours, right, but I, I think I gave away all of our product launches for the next six months. So uh, <laughs> we'll probably be okay there. Or yes. I didn't give any more, away. I don't know. I'm more sure daily hi-fi exclusives. Aren't you guys glad you showed up? Hell yeah. Well, I will tease our uh, next uh, virtual audio file happy hour. It's uh, October 1st, Thursday, 6 PM. Uh, we'll be giving away stuff. Uh, hopefully one day we'll have uh, you guys on as guests. So uh, we'll keep that uh, as an open invite, and we'll talk about that down the road. But yeah, just more like what we did right now, just uh, giveaways and fun and uh, you know special guests, uh, you know, just trying to keep things alive. For sure. Oh, you guys are killing it, man. Keep up the great work. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, so guys. It, was, it was great having you, um, you guys here, Nick and Larry. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we truly appreciate it because we love having everybody from all these manufacturers uh, show up for our show. And of course, everybody in the chat, everybody watching on the replay. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, again, this is the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast. We do this every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. On behalf of myself, uh, Michael and Joe, see you next time. Peace. Later, guys. Thanks, guys. Later.